If y'all do realize, please, that this book is not for you, I did not write Becoming Your Own Backer for you. I wrote it for your clients and people that don't know anything about the life insurance business. Uh, you should know it up one side and down the other, but the idea here is that uh, you buy these books wholesale, sell them retail, uh, you, you don't have any money tied up. I See, I've been around the life insurance business almost as long as Bob is, has, and uh, I know for a fact that the typical agent will spend $250 time, effort, and money trying to figure out whether he has a prospect or not. Yeah. Odds are, he doesn't. All that time, effort, and money wasted? Whereas, uh, Stephen, uh, do you think there's, do you have a gut feeling there's something fundamentally wrong in the financial world today? <laughs> Yes. Yes. Uh, well, uh, would you? I discovered a book that uh, uh, addresses this and that would probably give you an answer to it. Would you be interested in reading that book? Yes. Okay. Uh, uh, it's going to take two hours of your time and it's going to cost you 20 bucks. Uh, here's the book, give me 20 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> now, when you get through reading it, uh, if you don't like it, I'll buy it back. Ooh, yeah. Now, Good. If they'll pay for it, they'll read it. If you give it to them, they won't be. Now, if they'll read it, you will know immediately whether you have a prospect or not. Right. Yeah, yeah. If you have a prospect, hallelujah. If you don't, uh, I don't mind me that guy's <laughs> name. <laughs> you, you've wasted time. <laughs> Well, tell me how much money you got tied up when you bought the book wholesale and sold it retail. Give me money. Give me money. Does this make sense? Yes. Do you understand why I wrote the book? Yes. yes. Oh. All right, who's ready for some equipment finance? All right. All right. All right. Let's go to uh, page 55 in the book. It's the same thing that you'll see on the screen here. This is a logger in uh, eastern North Carolina who happens to be a nephew. I know the particulars of it, okay? Now, uh, why am I using a logger uh, as an example? Uh, simply because I don't know many people who know loggers. Do you? No. That's right. All right. Uh, see, I remember, why did I, uh, in a the buying of automobiles, why did I uh, use uh, dividend withdrawals rather than uh, loan? Because I wanted people to be get into the minds of those that are locked about loan is bad. And I want to prove that it could be done that way. But remember I told you that I would never let a client do that way if I was in the business. He's open. Because it, you, you switched, yeah. you killed the growth potential of the uh, concept. Yeah, like the, the little pine tree that came up there, that's dividends from the big pine tree. And it gets about 10 feet high, something like that, pull it up or cut it down, they won't grow anymore. Yeah. So never do that sort of thing. And besides that, remember the characters in the play here that uh, uh, if you are making a loan at somebody else's bank, yeah, loans is bad. But uh, uh, if you're the banker, loans is good. Uh, loans on the books of uh, a bank are an asset. Okay. Now, uh, Terry, okay, the reason I use a logger uh, is because if I want to talk to somebody about their business, uh, you run the danger of them saying, who is this guy trying to talk to me about my business? Uh, they quit listening. I've run into that time and time again. Remember my story about Bruno's grocery store? Uh, yeah, like, like I, I got thrown out after less than 15 minutes of conversation. Who are you to talk to me about uh, the grocery business? We'd be a bit of how it's done. Well, every business involves banking, doesn't it? Yep. There are no exceptions. Okay, so here's Terry. Uh, he's uh, age 30, logger, eastern North Carolina. Uh, he has four Peterbilt trucks. 
Now, do y'all have them up here? Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right, about one out of every ten is Peeville. Great fires and peace. Yes, sir. The, uh, Denton, Texas, and uh, Nashville, Tennessee. A oh, good, great equipment. Uh, that's the cheapest thing he has is uh, Peeville trucks. He has two logging tractors that Caterpillar take, but they cost twice as much as a truck cost. Now, in our part of the world, uh, we have uh, tree shears. Now, that's a generic term. It's actually a saw of the type, but it's the only big rig that uh, goes and grabs hold of the tree up here and sticks it off here and go, go, go. <laughs> uh, History Channel has a two hour program about e logging equipment in the Southeast United States. Uh, I've seen it twice, and uh, one of the tree shears that they demonstrated there cost $650,000. Terry has a stripped down model that's only a quarter million. Okay. All right, now, uh, every one of these things are financed. Terry is paying 16000 a month on truck on equipment payments to Associates Finance. Associates Finance is uh, kind of like GMAC to the equipment and the airplane world. Okay. Uh, very low profile. Uh, if you found one of their offices, it'd be on a strip center or something like that, and just kind of look like a hole in the wall or whatever. But uh, they're big in the business. Now, uh, let's go to uh, uh, page, uh, let's see, I've got to back up here. I think it is. No, we go forward. We go to page 56. There we go. Exhibit 1, page 56. Now, you look at the top left corner. You see back there in 1984, Terry bought a new Peterbilt truck, and you notice he paid $65,790 for it. Okay? Now, go down to the itemized items there, and uh, there's the re reiteration of the cash price. Line 2. He paid $13,190 down. Everybody see that? Line three, he financed $52,600 with uh, Associates Finance. Now let's go down to uh, uh, line 10. That's his payment per month. $1,502 per month per truck. Now, let's go to line uh, eight, time balance. Uh, he will pay out $72,096 of total out of cash flow. Well, how much did he finance? There's the reiteration again, the line six, 52,600 is what he borrowed. Uh, 72,096 is uh, what he uh, paid over the period of time. In between is the jelly and the sandwich. Interest, the volume, is $19,496. Folks, that is approaching $20,000. 27%. Yeah. Yeah, do the third grade arithmetic, 27 cents out of every law is interest. Now, that is if he goes the full four years of pay the part. Richard, uh, suppose he trades every two years. What will happen to that uh, factor? The volume, uh, the volume goes up. Yeah, volume bill plugging goes up. Question. What if he trades every year? 50-50? Yes, yeah, probably 50-50. Yeah. People don't take that in consideration, do they? Well, yeah. I just figured 37%. Is that just well, the, yeah, the total, the total, the total balance paid back? So 19,496 nine, over the 72. Um, 19,496 divided by. Oh, but the original borrowing of 52 is 37 percent of the original borrowing. That's what, but of every dollar actually paid, so yes. it's actually over the 70. Every time, every, every time he pays that at all, yeah, Richard's right there. Yeah. Every time he pays that pays out a dollar over the average of that piece of, of time, period of time, four years, that's uh, what portion uh, is going to interest. 
Now, tell me what happens at the end of four years. That truck smiled out. Yeah. Clue. The old dollar to reach 400,000 miles. <laughs> he's got to get a new truck. All right. Now he's down at the Peterbilt place, and uh, we're up the line two now. This time, uh, they gave him a trade-in allowance of 16000 but tell me what happened to the cost of the new unit. Wait up. Okay. I checked on this every once in a while because see, this is 1984. Uh, and uh, today, if you were to try to get this same model, it's a little over 100000 And that's courtesy of the, of the uh, central bankers, okay? Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, Look this page over uh, intensely and tell me where you're going to find an interest rate. It's not bad. Now, if this was a consumer loan in the USA, they would have an APR uh, by law. It's got to be there. You got to tell people how much this is costing in the interest rates. We have the same. Yeah, yeah. But, but not the volume. Yeah, but, yeah. But, uh, this is a commercial paper. In our country, uh, that is not a requirement. I think the rationale is if a businessman can't figure interest rates, he has no business being in business. <laughs> but Richard gave you the real story there. Now, Terry is making a so so living in logging because this is happening with every last bit of that uh, bit, of, bit of equipment that he has there. This is just one of those pieces of equipment, and there's uh, six, seven different pieces of major equipment. Terry, you're making so so living in logging. Bankers are making out like a bandit out of you. You need to get in the uh, banking business because everybody should be in two businesses. Whatever you do for a living, and uh, the banking business that finances whatever you do for a living. Now, get the banking business, Bob, he's got to capitalize that. Yeah. All right, so let's back up to illustration one. That's going to be on page 54. Top left corner, small print, uh, because the limitations of page, it's not that I don't want to hide, it, hide anything. Male, age uh, 30, uh, he's putting 15000 into a life fader pit 65. Now, y'all remember that uh, scale that I showed you earlier? He put money on a base policy, life payment 65, 15,000. Now, you notice he's paying 25,000 to a pay to petition rider. Total of 40 a year. Now, that sounds like a pretty good uh, size uh, premium, but compared with the cash flow that's there, this is very reasonable. Compared to the cash flow of a business like this, that was a very reasonable thing. Now, you notice in the left column, 40000 a year, four years, and then zeros? Yeah. This is a line in the sand with which to, uh, uh, this is a, a yardstick, we'll say, to compare everything else with. See, that's what I'm doing everywhere here in this entire book. I'm comparing what is or what could be, if a person will think. And so this is the yardstick. Uh, this is the, the uh, uh, what did you call this I, I did? Oh, go ahead. The, uh, the baseline. Uh, no, just a second, just a second. Then the name that the insurance industry used. Uh, oh, uh, premium offset, premium offset, premium offset, yeah. Uh, you see, there are people out there that uh, in the insurance business uh, said, oh, here's a way you can pay for it and no more. Nice, nice slogan, right? Pay four, you know, more for you. Now, the idea here was to pay as little as you can and get as much protection. See, that idea's been around since day one out there in the insurance business. And so this is just a modification. Look how you could do this. Just pay four years and that's it. And then some other guy came along but oh, here's it. Let me show you how you can demonstrate you can pay three and be free. <laughs> oh, God, please. Yeah. Talking about shallow thinking, huh? 
But there's that poison that's out there in the minds of people that life insurance is a poor place to have a community exchange, well, a warehouse. And nothing could be further from the truth. All right. How did we get zero outlay from that point on? How did we do it, Richard? Surrender dividends. Well, uh, uh, what about that BUA rider? Yeah. Yeah, you only have to pay the base of 15. Now, do y'all understand that he dropped the BUA rider there, Ashley? He didn't have to pay that. That's an option of your own mind. Yes, but the 15 still got to be paid, right, love? All right. So if you're going to keep up the program, like uh, like paper at 65, you still got to pay premiums for that period of time. But yet he paid nothing. So how did he do that, Will? Tell him, I'm Richard. Yeah, just surrender, pay up additions, or use the dividend to pay for it. Let's demonstrate that. Cut down the trees. Yeah, let's demonstrate that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I want you to go, uh, Jesse, to uh, the middle column there, total dividend. You see the total dividend column? Yeah. All right, do you know what the dividend is at the uh, fifth year? 63.39, see that look? Okay. Now, uh, what Richard said, he surrendered, uh, he uh, used that dividend to pay the premium. Well, that's obviously not enough to pay the premium, is it? So, how did he uh, pay zero? Well, go far right, love. You see the death benefit highlighted there? It's uh, the highlighted. Uh, you see what the death benefit is the fifth year? <clears throat> now you look at uh, number four. And what's the death benefit? It's lower. Uh, 1.64. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he surrendered some paid up insurance. The uh, cash value of which was about $8,600 or $8,400 or so. So at 8,400, 80, no, $8,600 plus the 63.39, that's the adds up to 15,000. Hence, no outlay, right Bob? Yeah. All right, now, uh, the next year, the dividend went up, didn't it? Yeah. It's engineered to do so. That's the way uh, engineers think. Actuaries are engineers. Yeah. All right, uh, so this time, he uh, had a dividend of 63.59 to apply to it. Uh, he surrendered some more paid up additional insurance, and so the uh, death benefit again went down. And when you get down, down, down to line 17, uh, uh, Darrell, do you see that uh, dividend that year? Announce it so I'll know you what you sold it on. Uh, 15,634. Well, that's more than the premium is. <laughs> well, won't that pay the uh, 15,000 premium due then, actually? The dividend that year, love, was six of uh, fifteen thousand six thirty-four. Right? Got that? Yep. That's enough to pay the premium in. Well, what do we do with the three sixty-four, uh, or six thirty-four, rather? Uh, that's left over then, huh? Go far right. Go over there to the uh, death benefit, and you notice it went up in comparison to the year before. Uh, I'm going to refer to that as planting trees from now on. All right. Yes, yes sir. Good one. Good one. Yeah. Yeah. Let the trees grow. Yeah. Now, those paid up additions also pay dividends, don't they, Steve? So the base policy is paying dividends and the uh, paid up additions is paying dividends. And so you have a compounding effect that really accelerates now as time goes by. Well, continue that process and you get down there to 865 and it's highlighted. What is the cash value? 1.5 million, right? Everybody see that? Yeah. Now, what's the death benefit? Go far right, it's highlighted. 406. 2.4 million. But uh, Mark, he didn't die. He wants income, passive income. Now, y'all notice that I did not say retirement income. Remember that Bob and I are wiping the word vocabulary of uh, retirement out of our vocabulary. That's a stupid idea. <laughs> Bob says when I quit traveling, he's going to take my place. 
Why in the world would Bob or I retire the way everybody talks about? <laughs> Good grief. We may be greater than we think. Sir? We may be greater than we think. <laughs> I know I'm afraid to know that I'm just not going to be too long. Look, if, if I had, re, quote, retired the way everybody thinks about, I wouldn't know you. That's right. That would be the most tragic thing I can think of. Why? Uh -huh. I just had a guy from Thorop today. <laughs> <laughs> Don't hold it against me. <laughs> I met a, a great group down there in Oakland uh, here last week. Uh, we uh, visited friends in uh, Seattle. Uh, we saw gorgeous countryside. Uh, we met new people to talk to. And we saw absolutely gorgeous countryside from uh, Chilliwack up here to uh, uh, Kelowna. Uh, and then I get to see you. Why would I want to quit doing this? <laughs> There's some stupid thinking going on out there. <laughs> All right. He wants passive income. That, that's money coming in. You can't get it. It just shows up. <laughs> All right, so on the left column there, I'll highlight it. He's getting 92000 a year as long as he lives. Now, Monica, let's add up all those up. Add up all those 92. Now, you go to the next to the right column, and you will see that he recovered the $160,000 he put into it tax-free. It's $1,748,000. Extra. And then he died, Ashley. <laughs> Check his death benefit, Bob. At the very end, or? Uh, At the very end. Two million four hundred seventy. Well, what was it at age 65? Oh, same. Almost. Oh. Almost. <laughs> almost. Oh. 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 I love it. Does Dave Ramsey know this? <laughs> no. Do any of the financial geniuses out there know this? Hmm? All right. Now, Wayne, when he recovers the 160 that he put into it, uh, now it's taxable from that point on. I do not illustrate that, but see, I want people to think. So you're going to have to pay taxes in the USA or, uh, after you recover the cost basis. But if you make loans, it's not. And if you make loans, the results get better. But I'm going to rub it in. <laughs> okay. Now, this is the yardstick we wish to compare everything with and work from. And Terry sees this and says, Uncle oh, Nelson, no, that is good. Well, I, I do think it's pretty good. But then it dawns on him that while this happening, he's paying out $192,000 a year in payments on equipment. He said, Uncle Nelson, can I do business in my place? Terry, <laughs> bankers do anything they want to if the bank has the capacity. Nelson, I've got a, a question here that right. you're going to laugh at. Well, come on, let's have it. Okay. All right. On our side of the border, we have a just a cost base, and it falls like a rock oh, after yes. age 65 to 70, somewhere in there. Yeah. And so would a better strategy would be to get on your knees and go to your local banker that you haven't seen in years and say, I want to assign this policy to the bank and you give me a loan for $1.5 million. They want to do it. Manulife Bank might. 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 But there's bank rules that are just, the branch level is $2 million, 500 per person. Oh, you have to go to private banking. Oh, that's your head office. Yes, they won't do it either. So there must be something else out there, because don't tell me that every dollar that uh, a business owes is fully secured by cash or a debt benefit. And if you're, fully, if you're in the business of lending, and you're fully secured by cash or a debt benefit, why would you not lend? There is no risk. Period. No. <laughs> but they won't. Can I add to that? But an insurance company will. Yes. No. There's the, the one thing that... Um, 
whether you know some folks are new to this or experienced with this is that when Nelson's describing this example in the book, it's important to go back earlier in the book on page 25 when he talks about we're not just talking about one policy. We're talking about creating a system of policies. No, but I had 49 at one time. Go ahead. And when you create a system of policies, what are you doing to the cost basis? Spreading. You're spreading the ACB. Yeah. Right? Yeah, so you're exactly. building a system for the, yeah. for the client. Jason, even after age 65 or 75 or yeah. whatever, the cost basis. Yeah. The adjusted cost basis in Canada drops like a rock. Yeah. But or, 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 unless you plant more trees. Yeah. Well, this is. Uh, Oh, I see. Uh, well, well, I'm, having younger trouble. Person. I'm having trouble yeah. here. Oh, when you recover cost basis here, what happens? Taxable. Well, so taxable. what? I was just telling you that this <laughs> happens in our country also. Yeah, uh, yeah that's right. Okay. But if you change the loans, it is not taxable. It is in Canada. It is, it is in Canada. Canada. Well, you, oh, 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 oh. Why? <laughs> <laughs> Ask the state because <laughs> some because of the it yeah, some some whiz kids sat back and said, "Oh no, we can't." Well, have that. Uh, you can compensate for that though by uh, listening to just to, to Jason there. Whole uh, policies, what does? The all. thing is, it, oh, this this will be more apparent to you in the next session that uh, we're dealing with. If we can go on, yeah, I, yeah, I like the dialogue. I really appreciate yeah, this. Yeah, it's yeah. important also, Nelson, just to clarify. So in Canada, when you put capital back into the system. You get a direct tax deduction for every dollar you put back exactly. in. Right. right. So the, the government doesn't know when you're going to die. The, the death benefit's paid tax-free. Yes. Yeah. So if, if a policy loan is a deemed disposition from the contract and it triggers a taxable gain, when you put money back into the contract, you get a direct tax deduction exactly. for the money yeah. you put back yeah. in. The because tax, yeah. the lien, when the policy loan is issued, the lien is on the death benefit. The cash value is collateral. Yeah, and the death right. benefit's going to be paid tax-free. So if the government doesn't know when you're going to die, they're going to give you the tax, the taxable gain back when you put the capital back in. It is. So if you create well, a system, see, well, based on the years that I've had experience with people here in Canada and in the, the discussion of this particular subject, it's just simply a difference in accounting. That's all. That's it. Yeah. Well, that things are things are only going to get better in 2017, where your ACB is going to be higher for longer. Yeah. Well, so, yeah. For especially full life. Actually, yeah, it's actually bad. Okay, well, are, we, are we happy enough to go on? Uh, Can I add one more point, Nelson? Oh, yes, I'm please. on my soapbox. No, 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 no uh, we need to hear from you because okay, yeah. I let's, trust. Yeah, let me ask you this question, and Will, I'll use you as an example. Sure. If I wrote you a check right now in this room for $100,000, payable to Will Moran, and I said, Will, the only condition of you cashing this check is you have to pay tax on the proceeds. Will you object to taking the check from me? Still take it. Are you okay to paying some tax on money you did nothing to earn? Another bank. Yeah. You did nothing to earn. You did nothing to earn the money. You okay with paying some tax on it? Tax shouldn't be an issue. It's that's a non-issue. It's the advisor that brings that issue to the forefront. Yeah. The 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 prospect will ask you about that, but you have to be able to just again. It's all about the way that we think. Who is the banker in your life as it relates to your financing needs today? If you're not controlling that function, why does the tax even matter? You're going to pay it anyway. <laughs> if you're controlling the banking function, you're you're the one that's going to accumulate the wealth, net of tax. Make sense? Yeah. And you'll learn more about that this afternoon. Yeah. Now, do y'all see how effectively uh, uh, an authorized practitioner of the Nelson Nash Institute uh, canceled out that noise? Yeah. <laughs> Good man. That's the lowdown. Well, I'm right. an authorized practitioner too, and I just needed to hear it again. Yeah, but uh, uh, you've been at it longer. <laughs> now, I told you this is an a, 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 a show. It's like a work in progress. That's just all there is to it. Uh, we learned that. I'm going to demonstrate that to you uh, vividly here in this next section. Okay, thank you. But uh, it's a work in progress, and that includes you, yours truly, yes. This is a great example, this conversation, of the backward bicycle. Yes. Because oh. yes. you know, he, he took that backward bicycle to some of the top educational institutions. Yeah. And, you know, basically took it to the rocket scientists and yeah. said, give it a whirl, you're smart. Yeah. And, and we're those guys. You know? My dad used to tell me, God rest his soul, my dad used to tell me the only thing that's rocket science is rocket science. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, can we go on?
Yeah. Terry says, this is, uh, okay, can I do business at my place? Well, doesn't the insurance company have to lend uh, uh, money? Uh, what can they lend here at the end of uh, four years? They put in 160, they can lend 157,000. My word, that's almost dollar for dollar. Yeah. Uh, well, can the insurance company lend him 52,600? Yes, he can. Yeah. You see, Terry says, I asked Terry, how much you need? 52,600. Uh, <laughs> well, uh, of course he can. He outranks everybody. I've already demonstrated that. Yeah. yeah. Let's go to illustration two. Go forward. That's on page 59. Now, everything up to line four is exactly the same, right, Dave? Yep. Exactly the same. Now, uh, let's go to the left column. Uh, minus 34,600 expressed as an outlay. Now, if I didn't do it this way, we'd have three more columns on this page. <laughs> it's already got too many columns. Yeah, yeah. All these numbers uh, have a tendency to, timid, to intimidate people. Yes. But no, that's not the object here to intimidate them. It's to uh, just help them understand what's really happening out there. Because remember what EBA said at the end of the article? Uh, if you know what's happening, you'll know what to do. Yeah. So this is to help them understand what is really happening. Now, minus 34,600, uh, what that is is shorthand, uh, Wayne. He borrowed 52,600, but he paid back 18. Now, where did the 18,000 pay, paybacks come from? Well, can anybody multiply $15 a month times 12 months? Okay, I'll raise that case. Yeah. All right. So every uh, four years, he gets a new truck, doesn't he? Yeah. When he gets down there to age uh, 65, check out the cash value, 1988 right? Mm-hmm. Well, uh, Dean, what was it when the insurance company handled it all? 1.5 million. Nick, and Nick, do you recognize he made a uh, half million bucks almost? Uh, by just shopping at home. Mm-hmm. All he was doing here in this example was taking the energy that was going to associates that got the money from the insurance company <laughs> in that fund. <laughs> he's, he's just getting the money that they were making. That is all. Yes. Nelson, does that so that ties to one of our attendees? I can't recall if it was Kevin or Daryl that talked about you know the policy is going to grow regardless of whether or not you use it. Yeah. So yes. go back real quick. To page, um, where's the first illustration there? 54. 54. 54. Yeah. So if you just humor me, if you take page 55 through 57, just sort of curl that up so that all you can see is page 54 and 59, like this. Can you replicate that? Ah, what about mainly this book? Mail. You, you're. So on page, on page 54, so which one of you gentlemen was the one that raised that? Okay. So if, if all you did was just leave the policy alone, it's going to grow, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. So on page 54, this is the insurance company administering the policy and the policy owner doing nothing. Nelson says that the policy owner's behavior is far more critical than the behavior of the insurance company. So on page 59, this is the policy owner's behavior impacting the policy. Do you see that? Yes? Yeah, yeah. I see the numbers are different. I'm just trying to figure out the, the logic behind how it's going. He was banking. banking. Yes. Yeah. See, what is happening there is the energy that was going to uh, Associates Finance is now going to this policy. I'm talking about cash flow here. You do not see the mechanics of how the insurance company actually handled it. Uh, I could not depict the fact that uh, he's paying uh, the $1,500 a month, or uh, 18000 a year. That is actually premium, folks. <coughs> the interest and so forth is being paid by dividend surrenders, but there's no way I could show it. All we're doing is taking the energy that was going somewhere else, and now it's going to my policy, being administered by my insurance company. 
We're talking about cash flow here. We're not talking about minutia of uh, what actually happened. Uh, to do otherwise would be a guy hooked up, a hint, uh, got his mind all uh, uh, preoccupied with, uh, goes to the grocery store and he wonders how much the uh, girl at the checkout account is making. <laughs> <laughs> well, how about that meat manager back there? What, what's he making? <laughs> Do you really care? <laughs> All you want to know is what's it going to cost me to take this meat out of here and get past that cash register? <laughs> <laughs>